Well, hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us on Logistics Executive TV. Today, I am joined by a gentleman who has a very long list of accomplishments to his career. He is the MD of the Art of Service. He is a highly accomplished author, a recognised authority in the field of business management, information technology, cyber security, with extensive experience and expertise right across uh, many areas of industry. And in specifically, today we're going to be talking about logistics and supply chain, particularly about logistics. So, Jared Blyktop, thanks for joining us. It's my pleasure, Kim. It's a pleasure to be here, and I'm, I'm honoured that you'll, uh, you'll have me <laughs> on this beautiful day. Yeah, the beautiful day where you are, and you are hailing from what sort of environment today? I think you're in the I'm sunny. A, well, yeah, it's interesting, Kim, because you sound Australian, and I know you're not an Australia. I don't sound Australian, but I am Australian, so I am in Australia. So it's, it's, a, it's a mixed up world. I'm uh, 40 minutes north of Brisbane in a rural area where the where the country is wild and the horses roam uh, free. <laughs> and you have. And I understand you have a lot of horses, so I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, we, we got horses as well. I've, I've got a, a view here of the horses in the paddocks, so I'll know when they get uh, get antsy. It's um, it's 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 uh, mid mid winter here now. Actually, tomorrow's the shortest day, as we all know. And then uh, the horses get anxious because they want to be inside by by five o'clock, five thirty, because it's getting cold and dark and dreary. So, major responsibilities going on here. Sensational! It sounds like an absolute slice of heaven. I'm going to be, no, uh, I'm going to be in that part of the world very shortly. So maybe I'll come in, out to the country and look you up. Good idea. <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> Good stuff. So you're a little bit of a global expert in the area of uh, performance-based logistics (PBL), uh, maximizing efficiency and performance. Yeah, you've written. Countless amount of material and, and books and uh, online ebooks. Uh, you've consulted to some of the largest organizations globally, uh, Europe, especially, and APAC, where you're based now. Um, you're a subject matter expert in this area of, of uh, PBL. Tell us a little bit about your background in regards to how you got into. Uh, this area of expertise, um, where this generated from, and then I want to ask you specifically uh, some questions about public uh, performance-based logistics itself. Yeah, I'll lead you through PBL. Uh, the the thing is that what we started out with uh, uh, here is with uh, question-based consulting. Um, originally, uh, way back when, when I was a, a CXO. Uh, I got uh, I got pulled up into a, the chair of C uh, CXO CIO actually uh, because my CIO was leaving and he said oh you're the one now which this is like 30 years ago or something so like, oh great fantastic I don't know what I'm supposed to do here uh, help me out yeah I gotta go now I gotta lead this whole other thing and I'm out of here so uh, I learned by doing but I was always uh, asking myself what if I just had a major list of questions that I could ask my people for this specific topic what I need to worry about and make sure that I'm not missing anything that I, I, I'm covering everything that needs to be covered uh, so I don't uh, lie awake at night uh, thinking about uh, what am I missing here is there something that we've all been there obviously so that started out with what the art of service is today. So today we've got a range of up to 30,000 different topics that cover all kinds of assessments, uh, all kinds of topics for uh, business professionals and tech tech professionals and uh, go in depth into each and every one of these uh, these topics. Now for today, the topic is uh, performance-based logistics. Uh, the is. topic is uh, based on uh, the data that we have in our uh, our databases and the data that we deliver to clients. And how we do that is basically by visualizing everything that's involved in performance-based uh, logistics to give them an idea that they're not missing anything, that they're covering everything. So that's uh, that's the main uh, main gist of it. Okay. So if you'd like, we can, we can get into that. I can yeah, show you. I've done a bit of research on you, Gerard, and, I, and I've got to say it runs pretty deep. And uh, as I say, looking up the amount of publications, it was a bit of a mind boggle. So I'm glad we're focusing just on uh, PBL today. <laughs> but so, so how does how does performance based logistics differ from normal logistics approaches? Maybe give us a minute or so on that. 
Yeah, well, normal logistics, uh, as we all know, it's just about buying and procuring the elements that you need uh, based on the needs of the business. Performance-based logistics, the word says it itself, it's based on the performance, it's based on the outcome. So it's a whole different ball game there. Uh, you're more in a partnership, more in a uh, corporation, working together to achieve a joint outcome. And that's the main goal of performance-based logistics. Uh, it's everyone uh, on the same boat, basically, to make sure that we're the live together we're delivering the, the the same outcome which sounds easier than it is it's 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 not as easy as it looks uh, there have been some projects in the past that have been uh, semi successful and uh, some projects that have have been not that so successful it originated out of the uh, department of defense in the usa uh, right. when uh, when uh, they needed to procure uh, jet fighters and they tried that out with a uh, PBL uh, approach, um, uh, with mixed success, I must say. But they've learned a lot from it, and they still continue uh, to do that. If you look up current news items, there's a recent news item uh, in April, May, where they're uh, they're starting out again with PBL with uh, with F-35 Joint Strikers. So it's a it's an ongoing thing in uh, in 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 the Air Force in DoD. But also, uh, what I'm seeing is that it's uh, it's being uh, used and in, uh, in in major areas in other verticals as well. And uh, I'll show you that uh, that soon as well. What kind of verticals there are. So it's, it's, uh, there's a lot of interest out there in uh, in PBL, but yeah, people yeah. are sort of uh, feeling in the dark, as to speak, because we're all used in logistics the way of how we do things, and PBL yeah. is a different way of approaching things. It's more of a cooperation. It's not just a contract. It's more of a service level agreement. So like we we adhere to trying to get to these things, and if we don't oh. get these things, these are. Uh, so it's a different way. It's a cooperation kind of way. Okay. Well, look, that's interesting. So, so, and you know, good, good point. Most of the logistics terminology came out of the uh, the military yeah. defence uh, yeah. jargon, to begin with, as we know, way back to First World War, I guess. Um, so, just maybe summarise for us, for sort of the logistics and supply chain practitioners. For the for the reasoning of using PBL would be to just summarize for us what would be the outcomes you're trying to achieve that might be uh more interesting than you know just rolling on through normal uh logistics or supply chain processes. What would be well, the outcome you, you you'd look to achieve through PBL? Yeah, you're you're looking for system availability, you're looking for reliability. Those are the main things that you're that you're looking for. And when you're dealing with essential equipment, for instance. Uh, or when you're dealing with services that need to be uh, consistently consistently accessible, need to be accessible all the time. So that's where PBL can really shine. It, it can reduce um, life cycle costs, uh, for example, uh, by optimizing maintenance and support activities because you're aligning those with what the client needs and leading to cost savings over the long term. So that those are kind of the benefits that you can achieve when you do uh, PBL. But on the other side, it also promotes uh, proactive maintenance and uh, predictive analytics, to give some examples, uh, because you've got early detection and resolution of issues before they escalate, because it is in partnership and everybody's looking the same way. And not just you're not just waiting for your contractor to come up with, hey, here's an issue. Now we're dealing with it together. It really uh, establishes and enhances uh, collaboration and partnership between customers and providers which is different in some instances, uh, definitely you have improved in communication and you have shared goals and better overall yep. performance outcomes. That's the main thing. Okay. okay. That's so, what's so, Okay, well, thanks for that. So one of the challenges we see right across the landscape in logistics and supply chain um, more generally is that uh, folks working, practitioners working in logistics and supply chain are often seen as the silo or they're over there in the in, in the business. They're not particularly front and centre, maybe not even necessarily uh, represented on, on the boardroom table, as we're aware. Yeah. Um, how does PBL help practitioners in, if they're working with, uh, with in the logistics space in particular, how does this methodology help engage? Does it offer any ability or, a, or enhancement of engaging with the rest of the organisation? Because you talked earlier about getting everybody on the same page. Does that include people throughout the rest of the organisation? Does it include sales? Does it include administration? Does it include other parts of the operation? 
Uh, the answer is yes. The thing is, uh, the, the common challenge that you have with PBL is the de de definition and measuring of performance metrics and measuring them accurately and uh, defining them accurately. And you can't do that in a silo. It just doesn't work. You need to have a process layer on top of your organization to make sure that you have PBL aligned with the needs of the whole organization towards what the vendor is trying to deliver for you. So it starts with uh, uh, defining and measuring uh, performance metrics accurately, getting those right. That's what it starts with. And okay. that's across all silos, so yes. Okay, so that's uh, from what I can understand. What you what you're talking about here is you're talking about internal to the organisation. How does PBL apply to the client, to the customer? Is there a, is there a, some sort of buy-in or understanding or agreement required to get the customer engaged in this, or is it purely an internal uh, methodology inside of an organisation? No, it's uh, definitely uh, uh, have the customer in there as well because it's a process-driven approach to delivering outcome, which means that everyone has to be on board in this, which is the hardest thing to do as well. Uh, but that's what you're aiming and focusing for. So it's a process-based approach across all the silos, including the customer and including the vendor. Uh, you want customer feedback. That's what you're thriving for. You want customer feedback and a loop there continuously to have uh, your uh, your outcomes, uh, uh, the outcomes that you that you want to achieve there. Okay. Now, I attended uh, one of your online seminars uh, some time ago, and you had some pretty good graphic stuff that you were putting up on screen. Is there some um, is there some methodology uh, graphs or diagrams that you can show us that could perhaps uh, help better explain uh, the way that PBL works? Yeah, excellent question, Kim. Uh, I do, actually. And uh, I prepared something for, uh, for, for you as well and for this. Very good, and, you're up. Uh, the reason for this being, and I do this for, for each and every uh, of the topics that I'm sharing, because it just gives a good overview of what it all involves, what's important. And let's sure. quickly run through that. So what you're going to look at now, I'm going to share my screen. Let me know if you see what uh, if you see performance-based logistics on your screen in the, uh, the dot. That's it. Okay, excellent. So what you're looking at here is uh, uh, all the data that we have on performance-based logistics. So this will have all the questions that we have, all the potential answers and ideas that uh, that are involved in performance-based logistics, the how, uh, all the people that are involved in performance-based logistics and what roles they will fulfill and how they're all connected. So it's the whole enchilada, basically, what you're looking at here. Okay. Let me Let me explain what you're looking at when I double-click on this one. Don't get alarmed. All right. I'm ready. Oh. Right. Oh, there it is. Too so what we, uh, what we have here are the, uh, the main issues, uh, the main areas surrounding performance-based logistics and where they are being used. So you see uh, a lot of areas where they're being used uh, in mining, in robotics, for instance, uh, in, uh, let's have a look at what else, uh, related to cloud. How do, you, how do you focus on that? Cybersecurity and performance-based logistics. I'll click on some so you know where I'm looking at. Cybersecurity in performance-based logistics, uh, autonomous vehicles in performance-based logistics, cloud computing, all the areas that are related to performance-based logistics. So the areas that you need to be thinking of in performance-based logistics, those are uh, the subtopics, so to speak, of performance-based logistics. Now, when I pull one out, just pick this one, contract management in performance-based logistics and zoom in a bit. So this is the knowledge base that shows you everything that's in here. I open this one up and what we see now, I'm just going to explain what we're looking at before we go into the ma major issue in PBL. Oh, that's a bit better. Yeah, now I can see it. Yeah. Now you can see it. Now you can read them. Eh? Do you mean yeah. I can make them a bit larger? So now you can read them. Yeah, a bit larger. There we go. So the contract blue. management. There you go. The question, Good. these are the questions that you need to be asking. Those four blue balls here when you're dealing with contract management and performance based logistics. No. Uh, what organization design elements had a positive or negative element impact on PBL implementation? What post PBL implementation results have you seen or experienced? Have any risks uh, related to the process for making contractual payments been mitigated? Are PBL contracts measured against the best possible performance scenario? Well, that's uh, an interesting one. Now, the beauty of this is, and I'm going to show you what else is underneath this. I'm going to open up all those four balls. Good God. Yeah, good God it is. 
all those four balls. Now we see some other colors appearing here. And we see the green balls. The green balls are actually the activities that you need to have in place for PBL. So the green balls are the activities that you need to have in place for PBL related to this question, which relates to logistics here, down here. Contract okay. management and performance-based logistics. Those are the green balls that you need to have in place. Again, like I said at the start, this makes sure you don't forget anything, that, you, that you're covering anything, everything that needs to be done checklist. in PBL. It's, it's a, a big checklist, a massive checklist. And now you yeah. go, and a lot of people will probably go like, oh, my God, and we have that. I have all these balls, all these questions, all these activities. I have no idea what I'm looking at. It's all too much. Hang in there. You'll be fine. I'll take care of you. I just want to explain what the balls actually mean, because the beauty of the uh, the green ones is also they will show you what kind of roles you need to attach that, to them in your organization. Here, team assistant. And um, we have this one. Team assistant is a busy one here. So we have the job roles that are attached to each and every one of these activities related to this one. So you actually have a, 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 a like a job role a description right away with this as well, which is really helpful. So yeah. I'm just I'm showing you this because it will show you the logic behind this. The logic is that the, the, the major topic is performance-based logistics. This is a subtopic. This is the question related to the subtopic. Sub these are the activities that you need to be doing in relation to that question. And these are the people that are involved in their role in, in, in their roles to do take care of that action. Now you also see here uh, uh, the red balls and the green balls, and they're just keywords. So if I'm totally want to focus on only on risk and it's related to an activity related to risk, I'll click on this and out pop you probably a lot of green balls that are related to specifically risks. I won't do that because my screen will fall up. I might take an, pick up an easier one like this one, payments. Payments. So there's a couple one that pop up. These are the activities that you need to take care of in payments. And I have leverage to the layer split of large payments, include or exclude executives who have earned no at-risk payments, calculate the interest on a series of equal payments. But that's all the stuff that you do here when you're dealing with payments specifically. So those are all the areas that we're covering here. Okay. So this is a lot. This is a lot. But I'm going to make it easier. Yeah? yeah? Let me make it easier on you because what this also has, and this is how we explain it to customers, is... The most important question to ask. The questions themselves, they're all organized. They're all organized based on their priority score. So one question is organized higher than uh, another question based on their priority. So you could go and say, I want to see uh, 10 prioritized questions, the top 10 of the highest of the questions that are uh, have the highest priority to take care of in PBL. This is usually what we do with management teams. We walk through these questions and we open up all these balls and then we'll walk them through like, are we doing this? Are we having this? Are we not forgetting that? Who's taking care of this role? What's the racy diagram for this whole thing? Uh, but let's just, for the sake of argument today, only do the one instead of the 10. Otherwise, we'll overwhelm and we'll run out of time and the horses will get anxious. There you go. Let's go. We'll do this one. Is it time? That's the number one question, the highest priority. Is it time to improve your organization's performance management in supply chain and operations? And I, I double clicked on it, as you've just seen. Ooh. It's related to performance based management of logistics assets. And it has um, these areas attached to them. These are the activities that you need to have in place, uh, the, 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 the best ideas you can put in place in your organization to make sure that you're doing this. Uh, improve your organization performance management in supply chain operations with PBL. That's what the answer that we're looking for here. Balance the need for global optimized support chain. Uh, rate an automated warehouse in terms of warehouse processes and operations. Uh, evaluate performance of handling product returns within the reverse supply chain. Understand all the need, needs and risks in your supply chain. Share your views with your organization, your vendors, your partners, your clients on improving the efficiency of supply chain and start investing in improving the supply chain. Have real-time visibility across your supply chain and get your customers to see the bigger picture in terms of how value is created or destroyed throughout the supply chain. This is PBL. This is the main question that you need to be asking when you're dealing with PBL and all the activities that you need to have in place when you're taking care of PBL. This is helpful. 
Because to a lot of clients, this, this gives them an overview. Of, oh, this is what I need to be doing. Hang on, I can, I can, I can go through this and go. Uh, we're doing that. Don't want to see that one. Uh, we're also doing that one. Don't want to see that one. So you can just leave it with what you what you need to be doing, basically, which is a whole lot handier to use as an organization. There's also another way of looking at it, and that's I can also say as an organization, and uh, I'll give clients access to this as well is these are all the job roles that are involved. You've seen the little blue balls, all the job roles that are involved. And I'll, I'll zoom over them a bit so you can have a look at them and re read them. These are all PBL-related job roles and logistics-related job roles. Um, these are job roles that are real-life job roles out there in organizations. Uh, and I can click on one, PBL Operations Segment Manager here, for instance, and these are the activities that that person needs to be doing the PBL operations manager. And if I click on the, the green balls, they go back to the questions, they go back to the major areas. So it's all related. But I'm making sure that I'm not forgetting anything. Yeah. And the, the other thing that's easy as well for clients, uh, how we, uh, w what you need to be looking at is, for instance, uh, we've gone through that one. We want to see this one. I give you an idea. For instance, if you're dealing with, I only want to know about contracts. This is all the stuff, the stuff that you need to be covering when you're focusing specifically in contracts in relationships to B PBL, because contracts are way different than the contracts that you're used to. They're more SLA and cooperation focused than they are with standard, uh, standard vendor management relationships. So these are all the activities that you need to be asking here, uh, doing here. Uh, what is the contract management process for PBL, which performance, performance based? A management system will you use to monitor contract or uh, project progress. And these are the activities under here. Um, and I won't bore you with more, but there's much more yeah. in this. Uh, it'll give you an idea of what PBL is and what the main areas are that you need to be covering. Uh, so you don't forget them. We'll start with uh, the major, the 10 most important questions. Leave them out on the, on the screen. So you have that idea open. And uh, this one. That's PBL itself and all the sub sub areas. And now the 10. There. Okay. The 10 it's major tough. questions. So it's really helpful. Uh, and this is yeah. what I mean with question-based learning. And uh, we start out with these questions in an organization, and clients can say, and this is, and clients say, well, I need that question, I'm not using that question. And I do that, we deliver that in books and in toolkits and all that stuff. But uh, PBL is really happening for organizations when they know what they need to be doing, something to grasp onto, because it's all an esoteric concept. If you Google it around a bit, you get those DOD sites, you get a bit of Wikipedia. There's not much out there for PBL, um, no. but it's helpful. It's helpful because it covers everything that you need to be doing and knowing from a service perspective towards your client, really across all silos, performance-based, have SLAs in place to organize that. Full stop. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, perfect. Thank you. So back to back to our screen with you and me. I mean, there we are. are. There we are. We've got your back. Wow. You so, got my, so, you, you've got my back. <laughs> some very interesting takeaways from there, Gerard. And, uh, and what interests me as an executive search guy um, was the fact that you've got pretty made job descriptions almost. In, in the strategic form anyway, for every yeah. single role. There must have been well over 100 roles there that link themselves back to PBL, yeah? Some form or shape yeah. of the logistics uh, spectrum. Correct, yeah, yeah, over 100 roles. You could see them, all the little blue balls, they're all individual roles, wow. and they have responsibilities to attach to them and questions to ask. And they're also helpful with interviews, mm -hmm. when you need to interview people for certain roles, you just ask them the questions that are aligned yeah. to a role. And see if they come up with with answers that are that are useful for you. Yeah, so definitely. You, so you strike me as being the Simon Sinek of of logistics, i.e., you're asking why. It's all about the questions, right? Exactly. It's all about the questions. So you've got to know why you're doing something. You know why the outcome is going to be what it is. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Brilliant. So, Gerard, what? Give us a bit of a heads up before we wrap up. What sort of companies, um, more than others, do you find that PBL works best for? Is that a reasonable question? Uh, it's a reasonable question. Um, usually what we're looking at here when we're dealing with PBL is uh, what we're really dealing with is an organizational change program. 
Uh, and when you and what if you know something about organizational change, it's always about starting small and building uh, on successes. So it works for every organization, but you start with one small thing. You start with a vendor uh, that you can rely, that's really a part rely upon, that's really a partner. You start with a customer that's really a partner, and you build that partnership across. That's how you build PBL. That's how you start because it's really about building the process in place. I have those success rates there. Once you have those, you can sell that internally, and then you can move up to larger projects and larger projects. It's organizational change. It works in every every company. Uh, as, as you've seen in uh, the bubbles when we started up the knowledge graph and it exploded for the first time, you saw it all in, in all the verticals, in aerospace, in uh, automotive, and all the verticals, yeah. they were all in there. So it can be applied anywhere. But the success rate depends on how you approach it. Have the right KPIs, metrics, partnerships, start small. That's my main message. Don't go yep. too big right away because it is a completely different way of thinking. It is. And uh, I, I guess what I'm taking out of this is system, structure, uh, joining the dots. I mean, data driven, obviously, you have your data points is, is what I'm hearing, and working off real world uh, in, a, in an extremely diverse and dynamic and at times chaotic environment, as we've, we've all been, particularly around the logistics sector for so long, whether that applies to just pure logistics company or the broader supply chain and the logistics part of that. So bringing that structure and that some uniformity and bringing everybody in on the same page, as you said, right to begin with, yeah? Exactly. And the key to that is data. Like you said already, the key to that is data. It's data-driven decision-making. Uh, that's, that's a pivotal role in PBL. Uh, that provides available insights, um, uh, creates informed information choices throughout the logistics process, and you need to collect and analyze data. Uh, from your partners, uh, like performance metrics, maintenance records, uh, supply chain information. Uh, you want trends, you want patterns, you want areas for improvement, but you don't want them just for yourself. You want them throughout the whole supply chain and with your clients. So data. If, if there's one word I got to say, it's data. Okay. And a lot of people talking about data these days across the supply chain completely. So, okay. So here's a question for you. Um, a lot of effort going on in here. There's a lot of analysis there's of the data and also the business systems and the processes. Surely this is going to cost a lot more for an organization to adopt a process like this. You got an answer to that? <laughs> uh, the answer is you're not doing that if it's going to cost more money than it, uh, than it saves. So uh, I'm, I'm, I give the question back. <laughs> now, really, what you're looking for is cost savings. That's why you're doing PBL. Otherwise, it wouldn't be useful at all. You're looking right. for areas where you can save costs, where uh, the vendor can save costs, where your client can save costs, um, and where you're increasing performance at the same time. So if PBL doesn't deliver uh, cost enhancement, uh, cost enhancements in an organization, then don't do it. It's very simple like that. Uh, but yes. it should, and you should be aiming and striving for that because that's your main goal, one of the main goals. All right, great to hear. Well, look, I'm, you know, I've got a, my head is hurting. Uh, there's been way too much information there for me to. <laughs> I've been juggling the balls on your screen. <laughs> <laughs> so early in the morning for me, but but I'll, but I'll tell you what, uh, you, you know, I I can see. I mean, because of the chaotic and dynamic nature of the, of the world that we live in, and the, and the logistics world in particular, uh, I can I can really see how this provides a platform. It's virtually the the uh, the, the, the book on uh, the, the, they have uh, you know PBL for dummies, uh, I guess. The, and, but as opposed to the yellow book in the bookstore, and I'm sure you've got one out there, um, you, you've got this online. And what's your what's your model? So I mean, you go to a customer. They either approach you, you approach them, you are selling in this concept of PBL and how the benefits, cost benefits to, to the organization. Um, yeah. What do you what do you find are the main questions that, that uh, an organization or or a lead would ask you uh, about the process? Uh, our leads, um, my leads, are usually uh, because people buy buy the book, buy my book, buy our book. And so, so those you're are leads. Leads. So your model is you provide the literature. It's not a subscription yes. model. Uh, okay. No, it's, uh, we provide literature. You can buy book, ebook. It's all on Amazon and all the places. The usual. So that's why people actually come in, uh, and because it's a self-assessment, we want them to do it themselves. That's how it's all built. Eh? That's why you see all those questions, potential answers. It's a self-assessment. You can do it yourself if you want some help. 
we're here for you. So that's how clients approach us. And we come in and we, we work with management teams in one, two, three days, work through those questions, answers, and they come out with a project plan on the other hand of how to uh, how to install uh, PBL in their organization, how to make it work and happen in a small project to start out with. And so that's basically how the process works. Pretty straightforward. And uh, yes. anybody can contact me with any questions. I'm right here. All the DMs, all the direct messages and all the platforms and I'm open to any questions. Good stuff. And I think people can see up here where they can get hold of you. The best places are what? LinkedIn? What are you on yeah. Twitter? All uh, of you. LinkedIn is great. LinkedIn is great for me. I live on LinkedIn. Uh, email usually, email as well. Uh, I live on email, LinkedIn. Those are my main things. Uh, I do daily uh, walkthroughs of these uh, uh, of these uh, knowledge graphs as well for different topics. So people can have a look there if they want to see other things that I'm doing. Uh, and uh, they can have a look at my books. They're all on Amazon and all the places. So that's that's the usual if they want to know more about me. But LinkedIn is my main, uh, main go-to. Uh, lots of people there who talk to me all day. Uh, I live on LinkedIn. That's how you found me too, uh, Kim. That's how it we is. connect. There yeah. we go. I don't know. LinkedIn, buddy. Somebody reached out to who? Hey, uh, Jared, Jared Lockdike, uh, MD, the art of service, uh, author, uh, entrepreneur, thought leader, and uh, general raconteur. Uh, fantastic to talk to you. Appreciate taking time out. It's time to feed the horses. And, yeah, it's uh, getting dark. <laughs> we look forward to staying in touch with you, and I look forward to seeing you in Brisbane sometime. Thanks for having me, Kim. I had loads of fun, and I'll see you yeah. again soon. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks, yeah. everybody. Thanks, everybody, for joining us on Logistics Executive TV.